Hey, good morning, it's Owen Big Land. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Uh, more, and on, uh, more and more I get uh, people asking me uh, questions about uh, real estate reality shows. And often when I'm working with clients or I'm, I'm out meeting people at open houses, this conversation comes up about these reality shows. And I also get a lot of potential realtors that might call me who are thinking about getting into the real estate business and I'm more than happy to talk to them for five minutes uh, on uh, you know what the business of being a real estate agent in Vancouver and the commitment and, and the time and, and uh, what you can expect. Uh, because a lot of them I think come in, they, these reality shows are very popular on real estate, but I do think that uh, you know it gives people the wrong impression uh, about what real estate is about. Well, I'll tell you right up front, these reality, real estate reality shows are about as far from reality as you can get, uh, folks. They're, they're completely uh, scripted and for the most part they're just made up. These situations just don't happen in the real real estate world. Uh, and uh, I think a lot, especially when I'm talking to people that call me and are interested in becoming a realtor, I think a lot of them think it's, you know, it uh, looks pretty glamorous on some of these million dollar listing shows and hey, these guys are driving $100,000 sports cars and wearing fancy suits and nice watches and making six figure incomes and yeah, there is a lot of that. Uh, well, there is some of that in Vancouver for some of the uh, higher uh, uh, echelon realtors. Uh, no denying it, you can make a very good living uh, in Vancouver real estate, but it's not as easy as what they portray in these reality shows. So I'll just give you a few things right off the bat on where these uh, reality shows have no bearing in, in real reality for real estate. Uh, the first thing is, is the, uh, the competition amongst realtors that are getting into verbal arguments and some of them have shows I've seen where they actually get into, into fisticuffs, physical arguments. That would never happen in the real uh, world of real estate, no matter where it was, whether it was New York or Vancouver. Uh, real estate, the business of real estate and being a realtor is all about cooperation. Cooperation with the, your other realtors. That was something I learned from my dad when I got into this business a long time ago. You always want to be courteous and do every, when you're on the listing side, first off, when I'm a realtor, and I'm, 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 which most of my business is, is listing and marketing homes. I'm going to bend over backwards for those realtors to come in, make it as convenient as possible for them to show my listings and uh, anything they need, whether it's strata documents or inspection or a short, uh, quick notice on a turnaround on an appraisal, whatever. That's my job is to be as cooperative as possible. You never want to do anything to uh, uh, get into an argument with another realtor because realtors will create a mental database. I know I do. When I'm on the buying side and I'm looking for listings for my clients, uh, when I see the realtor's name, a lot of times I've done business with them in the past or I know of them. Some have got good reputations, some maybe were a little more difficult to work with. So you always want to uh, uh, be co as cooperative as possible with your fellow realtors. That's my bread and butter as a listing realtor. As I say, I want to uh, do everything I can to make it as easy as possible for these other realtors to work with me and bring me some offers. And uh, the reality shows, of course, are the opposite of that. It's these bitter rivalries and petty uh, arguments that they get into. You would never have that in the real world. The other thing is negotiating. Uh, oftentimes on these reality shows, they'll go back and forth, they'll negotiate on the phone or in person verbally. And again, that is not the way it's done in the real world. Verbal uh, uh, offers and verbal counter offers do not mean anything. They're not worth anything. Uh, they have to be in writing. So yes, you can do some tinkering verbally uh, in between counter and counter offer situations, but everything has to be in writing. Uh, so if you write an offer in writing, usually that offer is countered back in writing via email or fax. You might counter that one back again. It could go back two or three times. Sometimes you'll get it to a point where maybe you're very close, maybe five or ten thousand dollars apart. Then you may call up that other realtor and get a feeler for it verbally and say, listen, how about we meet in the middle? If I counter it back uh, somewhere in the middle, will your seller accept? Yes, no, and we'll go from there. But it has to be in writing. Uh, you know, some of the other things uh, I'll comment too on, on uh, one of the others is, is the uh, renovation shows as well. People need to be careful with these. They, they sure make it to look like it's all sunshine and roses. You buy that house or that condo. Um, I have to laugh because 
most of these flipping shows are based in places like Albuquerque, New Mexico, or Austin, Texas. Uh, very difficult to, to pull these kind of maneuvers off in Vancouver where you have to drop a million and a half on a house. Some of these reality shows, they're paying 180 grand for a detached house and then putting a $20,000 reno in it. So the numbers are all a fraction of what they would be in the lower mainland. But one thing to remember with those uh, fix them and flip them type shows, for the most part, the numbers that they use in that for the renos are only for materials. So they buy a, 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 I can give you an example here, a one bedroom condo in Vancouver right now, 600 square feet. To do a basic reno on a typical one bedroom condo, 600 square feet, one bedroom, one bath, you're looking at probably thirty-five dollars to $40,000. That would be for a basic reno, to do everything. Kitchen, flooring, bathrooms, window coverings, etc. Paint, fixtures. Uh, of that $40,000, $20,000 of that would be materials, uh, and the other $20,000 would be labor. It's about a 50-50 split. So usually in these fix it and flip it shows, uh, they only put in the uh, fixed cost, the material cost. They exclude the labor, which is about 50% of it. So keep that in mind. Those are just a few things uh, about the reality shows. Um, you know, the other thing, uh, you know, on commissions as well, a lot of these reality shows down in the States, uh, keep in mind, realtors in Vancouver, uh, even though a lot of people complain, you guys are overpaid. Uh, as a matter of fact, as far as North American standards go, uh, realtors in Vancouver are uh, some of the lowest paid. Uh, if you go to a place like California or New York, uh, most of the time uh, the commission on that is six to seven percent on the final selling price. Uh, in Vancouver here, real estate commissions are not set, uh, keep that in mind, but the vast majority of sales in Vancouver are seven percent on the first hundred, 2.5 percent on the balance. So they are substantially less uh, than what you would get in a lot of U.S. Uh, cities where a lot of these reality shows are based out of. So keep in mind, reality shows, in my opinion, uh, are far from reality, uh, and uh, hope that sheds a little more light on what it's really like in the trenches in Vancouver real estate. I'm Owen Bigland. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.